After that, we ran seven, eight more patients that, of similar nature. And these were where I worked at the Monroe Way at Regina and also where Dr. Osmond worked in Weyburn. And we found that of the eight patients that we started out on niacin, all eight got well. Every eight got well. So now the question was, what are we going to do about it? Now, we, we were still not 100% sure because to think that you could cure such a dreadful disease like schizophrenia by giving him simple vitamin was, in fact, ridiculous. No one knew what it was, no one knew what it was causing it. How could we have the temerity to claim that we had a treatment for schizophrenia? So we decided, first of all, we need some money, so we applied to Ottawa, the federal government, to get a grant so that we do further research, and they advised us to do it double-blind, double-blind. Now, I had taken my Ph.D. in biochemistry, and I knew statistical analysis, so I knew what they were talking about, but they advised us what to do, and so we then started the first double-blind controlled experiment in the history of psychiatry in 1952. And we, we selected 30 acute, that's early schizophrenic patients who had been sick less than two years, who were admitted to a, to a general hospital in Regina, and they were randomized into three groups. One was on placebo, the other one was on niacinamide, and the third one was on niacin. Now the reason for that is that when you take niacin, you turn red, you flush, and you can't hide that. You can't blind niacin. Well, we didn't tell our clinical people what we were doing. We simply said we are testing niacin against placebo. And they would assume that every non-flushing patient was getting placebo when in fact half of them were getting niacinamide. So that was a real hidden control. Okay. So we ran that study for, we ran the study for about two years and then we did a follow-up. It was a blind follow-up. We didn't want our investigators to know what they had gotten in hospital. And we found at the end of the study that of the 10 patients on placebo, three were well, which is what then considered the natural recovery rate for this type of patient. And of the niacinamide group and the niacin group, 75% were well. In other words, we had doubled the two-year recovery rate by adding niacin or niacinamide to the treatment of that particular day. So that was the beginning of the whole orthomolecular movement at that time.